Welcome to Flight School 201. This is going to be some more advanced field training for those who have seen our original Flight School video. I will pass on some details of how I personally throw along with some extra tips we've learned over the years that have helped various throwers out. The four rules of Kylie throwing are, a Kylie must spin rapidly, a Kylie must slice the horizon, a Kylie must be thrown at or near horizontally, a Kylie must be thrown at optimal velocity. The four rules are simple enough, but execution of them is where people can sometimes trip up, so we're going to go over some details. The first thing we need to look at is stance and stepping. By lining up the feet slightly offline from the target, the front foot is able to step forward during the throw to open up and drive the hips and shoulders after it for maximum power. The next thing to observe is the chamber of the Kylie. It is held well behind the head so that a maximally long circular power stroke can be obtained and the weight of the head can be utilized to assist the throw. By both feeling and throwing the weight of the head, tremendous leverage and power can be obtained. However, if you try to throw a Kylie like a ball instead of swinging it like a club, you will tremendously limit your throw's power, as seen in the contrast of these throws. It's when the weight of the head is thrown that full power and range is achieved. Execute with looseness and finesse. If you are too stiff, you will not throw well. Think of your body as being a human bullwhip, a kinetic chain acceleration system which starts from the ground up and drives force into the tip of the Kylie. The finished throw combines a step that drives the twisting of the torso starting at the hips, which moves up through the body into the shoulders, culminating in the forcible dechambering of the Kylie into a throw with full follow through. Now it's time to return our attention to the details of the hand, grip, and wrist. Let's look at the hand first. A consistent release is needed for accuracy, and so for extended practice sessions or during various weather conditions, you can use tape and even chalk if needed. Apply sports tape to the middle pad of your top two fingers to prevent blisters. While we mentioned in our first video that an extended grip can be used, the hammer grip is our recommendation as it allows the impartation of much more power to the stick. To make the hammer grip, put pressure on the edges of the grip area at the end of the stick, utilizing the tape area on the trailing edge and the mid palm area on the lead edge. The next thing to be aware of is wrist alignment. You may note that as the distance the hand is held from the shoulder changes, the wrist alignment also changes. Also, a nose heavy stick which is held too loosely may exit the hand at a lower angle of attack than intended, resulting in a nose diving trajectory. When you throw, as you bring the Kali out of the chamber, allow the wrist to rotate out into supination without changing the flexion or extension of your wrist. If you change the flexion or extension of your wrist while throwing, your throw will misalign. Rather, the wrist flexion and extension angle in the chamber needs to be adjusted, and that in accordance with your throwing style and the results you get. You can tell what adjustment to your wrist alignment in the chamber is needed by carefully watching the stick. If it flaps up, you're turning it up. If it flaps down or nose dives, you're turning it down. Even if the stick auto-corrects and thus still flies, the velocity of the throw will suffer if you misalign it. With a combination of good alignment, form, and power, the stick will take care of itself. Now let's look at hand path and follow through. Do not dip the Kylie down. As you execute your throw, keep your hand at the same height as your chamber and certainly no lower than the shoulder. Do not dip it down. Throwing at various angles can alter the result in the field. The same stick will travel to the left, to the right, or go straight depending on the angle of how it is thrown. Adjust your throwing to match what your stick responds to best. Some models are best thrown at near to 3 o'clock and some near to 2 o'clock. When thrown at the correct angle, a Kylie will fly straight ahead instead of banking and turning during flight. The Kimberly Stinger is different from our other sticks and is designed to be thrown by the trailing arm. Grip at the very end and rock it in the hand to lock it. Throw just slightly above 3 o'clock for best results. Again, watch me rock it to lock it before I execute this second throw. The 
The Sidewinder Scout is also unique and is designed to be thrown with an extended grip like the way someone would skip a stone across a lake. You do not fully chamber the stick behind your head like the others. Now let's look at wind. A headwind can cause excess lift in your flights. A backwind will alert your game of your scent and kill your range. The best scenario is a sidewind and for range, a wind hitting your right cheek is ideal. To put everything together, feel the kinetic chain in your body as you go through the motion of stepping and throwing with an empty hand. Humans are adapted to throw. As you start out throwing, focus on throwing smoothly rather than with full force. With practice, the whole chain of events becomes easy, powerful, and consistent, and your ranges will increase. Now study these full force throws from various angles. Even the non-throwing arm is pulled to the side during the throw in order to aid in the acceleration of the system. The throwing hand is kept high throughout the throw, and the four rolls of Kylie throwing come together. In the end, it isn't really about how you throw, but about the attitude, velocity, and spin that Kylie has imparted to it. The Kylie is a true complex system. You set up its initial conditions and then it takes care of the rest, delivering magical flights which give you the sense that you are dealing here with something truly alive. That is Flight School 201. Put in the practice and you're gonna get good. It takes time, get your wrist aligned, slice the horizon, don't toss it up in the air and then down. If you lob it, you lob it. And you don't throw it hard. That's the kind of results you're gonna get. But if you throw it at the horizon and you really put the, the arm in it, you keep your body loose, you align that blade, you keep it at around three o'clock, give or take a little bit up or down depending on what it needs, you're gonna do really well. Thanks.